Okay, this is Front Ensemble tutorial video on your new warm-ups starting with 8.8.16. I'm going to be going through a couple of Front Ensemble fundamentals that you should know about, especially freshmen, and kind of uh, play through and talk through what we're trying to accomplish on these warm-ups as well. So, <clears throat> first off, when you're in the Front Ensemble, this is what's different about Front Ensemble than just middle school band is that we're trying to, we're an outdoor activity. We need to have a full sound. We don't have to hide and balance as much like we do in middle school band. So this is kind of nice for us to finally let the big dogs bark. So first of all, we're trying to go for a big robust sound. Okay, we're not gonna overdo the sound, but it needs to be a full sound. Okay, so the way we kind of produce this uh, in front of someone on the keyboard is we're going to make sure we have outdoor mallets, but we're also going to make sure we're playing with uh, extreme piston strokes. Okay, we want to make sure the strokes are fast and they come back up, and we're matching heights uh, as we're looking in to our section leader. Okay, so make sure as we prep or play, we got to match everything that the center marimba player is is doing. Okay, or wherever you're told to look. Okay, so first I'm going to go for pretty full heights here about. You know, about 45 degrees, forte. Um, I'm not really going to let go of my fingers at all. It's all going to, a lot of the weight is going to be coming from the back. So I'm going to be holding on here and loosening in the front. There might be a little bit more looseness in the front than you're used to. So the weight of the mallet can pull through. Okay. Um, so the way a piston stroke might look um, when you're doing quarter notes. but it's very firm and quick okay we want to make sure that we're hitting in the center of the bar okay and making sure that we're not hitting any string or notes right um, so then the next thing we're going to see a lot of piston stroke but the next thing you're going to see is kind of different in front ensemble is preps so you've often probably heard the drum line do duts where they're going duck 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 before they play front ensemble we're at the front of the band so we can't really do that okay so um, we're going to be doing something called preps, okay? And those are silent duts for pit, okay? So preps. Preps, the way I think about them, they're just for us. They don't need to be big, okay? They're small and staccato, okay? They're very sharp, so we can really get tick-tock, 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 tick-tock in there. We really see subdivision, okay? So it's small. And then the very, the and, one and two and, and is the height that we're going to play. So if we're going to play low, the ands will be at that height that it's going to be low, and then we play. Or if it's forte, you know, we're going to have the angle that we want to start with. Okay, so I shouldn't see this. Prep, bend, prep, bend, prep, bend, prep, <gasps> and you lift. You should be prepping the height you're going to play. Prep, bend, prep, bend, prep, bend, prep, and boom. It's only a downward motion. We've already taken care of the upward motion. Okay? So that's the basics. Like we'll, we'll add some more things uh, later, um, but we're going to get into playing here. You will see me start to move my body with the tempo because at the front ensemble, there's a little bit of showmanship. We are the kind of the screen the audience looks through to the band. So we have to be very much um, kind of high energy and we have to look the part. Okay. You guys have often heard me say the six M's, right? Uh, make a musical mo motion that matches the musical moment. Okay, so the front ensemble encompasses that. Okay, so you're going to see the front ensemble performing, facial expressions. You're going to have to get out of your comfort zone, and we're going to add motions and stuff that match the music. But a lot of that emotional energy comes from showing that we're, we're all grooving at the same tempo, and you see the whole uh, front ensemble bobbing and, and moving. So we, you're going to see that in a quarter time, um, sometimes, and sometimes it's in a half time. So, I'm not going to really speak on that too much because it, it depends on what your section leader does, but I'm going to do what feels uh, natural for what we're doing, okay? All right, so we're going to jump into 816. So I'm um, very excited about these warm-ups. So this uh, first one that we're doing here is scale double stops. So double stops are when you're playing both hands at the same time. Obviously, we want those not to flam. We want them to be tight and match technique and go for full sound unless we're doing some dynamics or something like that that we're talking about. Again, match your center on heights, match your center on body of sound, okay? Um, we're gonna be adding, so we start with our left hand, then after
after four notes, we're going to start adding the scale every four notes. And so on. Then we end up at the top. Just your right, then add the left. And head on down and descend the scale. And that's it, okay? When we are done with the last note of front ensemble, oftentimes we do an after flow, which is a half time, and then get set again, which is going to be something like this. So you're going to finish and set. And we usually set at the height that we finished. And it's just to make sure that the end, where usually in the, in the show, you're going to end like a run up instead of just like a robot. So we want to get used to ending an idea and then getting back, okay? All right, of course you can take this slower or faster. We're going to do a lot of different dynamics, tempos. So this is just your 120 average tempo. So you'll probably see something like this from your section leader. Prep and prep and then we start playing. Sometimes we add more preps, but usually you're going to add in on the second half of the prep. So you'll, you'll see prep, prep, then you prep, play, or sometimes it's going to be prep, 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 everybody prep, here, play. So it just, it depends. Okay. So sometimes you'll do uh, a, a down up and sometimes you'll do down up twice. So we'll, we'll tell you, okay? Um, but here we go. One, two, prep, and prep, and. So we just finished C, we're probably going to go to D flat. Then after we finish that, we're probably going to do D. Full exercise in E flat. Yeah, so just make sure you're working through chromatically through your scales. That might be a little bit different for you. When you finish, freeze and freeze, okay? Unless we're doing it again and we'll prep off. But freeze, look into the section leader. And do not move until the section leader moves. And then you, you copy what they do. However they do, they go to the right, you go to the right, they go to the left, you go, they go around. You, you just copy. Okay, you have to show your awareness. Okay? All right, so let's go on to octaves. Now I'm going to slow this down because I haven't really got a chance to practice these. So when we go to octaves, it's the same thing, but we're doing octaves. This is used in percussion ensemble and front ensemble all the time. You have to be able to keep your wrists apart the same distance and, be, and get used to that. Because in the shows, you'll have a lot of octaves because we're trying to get big sound, and that's a good way to do that. So um, this is just trying to work on that skill set. So we'll go through this exact same pattern. Um, so you end up repeating the top note uh, and the bottom note of, of the release. So let's check it out. Ready? exercise you want to make sure that you're finding the middle from C to C which is F and G and get your belly button there and then you're gonna move from side to side this one is octave so it's covering two octaves so I would put my belly button on C here and then I would have to do a little bit more motion so we don't want to turn our body okay we want to uh, move like a surfboard right move back and forth so make sure you're aware of don't just start your belly button on the first note you have to think long term where, what the range is, and then where's the middle of that, and then start moving, okay? All right, so green landmarks. So this is kind of getting you ready for the, an exercise called green, okay? Green uh, works from the tonic note, whatever the first note of the scale is. So for in the C scale, the tonic note is C, and that's the first scale degree. C, 
the fifth, one, two, three, four, five, that on your fifth, it is going to be G in the C scale, and that's a pivot note when we do green. C, da, 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 G, da, 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 C, right? Every scale has a different fifth, okay? Uh, and that's a pivot note. And then the next pivot note is actually a ninth from the tonic. And actually, that's the second scale degree. So C and the second scale degree is D. So our ninth will also be D. So that's my D. That's my ninth scale degree, which is also the same as my second scale degree. Okay, all these change with each scale. So this exercise is teaching you the landmarks in eighth notes and also coordinating between your right and left, just like the drum line is doing. Um, and preparing you for green eventually, so you know what those landmarks, and so you're not thinking about those two things at the same time, but you've already kind of prepped yourself. Okay, so let's do, uh, let's do this green. So it goes four, then it goes five, and then switch to your left. Then you're doing your right for a measure, and then you're keeping your right, and you go all the way down. Then we're going to do the mirror image opposite to the left side. Now that is not the fifth, that is the fourth scale degree, which is also good to know because that's usually if you're doing a circle of fourths, that's the next scale. And we might do circle of fourths sometimes, okay? And it's good to know your circle of fourths and fifths, okay? Um, it actually takes you down to your seventh scale degree. That's going to be your leading tone. Uh, so it's always good to know your leading tone and your theory. And then on the way up. And then we're done. So this is very much like drumline stickings, right for measure, left for measure, right for two measures, left for measure, right for measure, left for two measures. So it's kind of getting you ready for drumline as well. Okay, let's give it a shot. One, two, ready, go. to kind of start working on moving our, our feet, okay? So, I mean, you can't really see my feet here, but what I'm doing is that left foot, right foot, and then I'm gonna have to do, you know, like the percussion cha-cha, where I'm gonna have to put my feet together and then spread out to the left, put my feet together, put my right to the right. So, that's something that will help us coordinate our feet, okay? All right, cool, so I put an alternate rhythm in here, because we're gonna start to work on our 16th note clarity. Uh, when we go, we're going to make sure that those six notes are nice and clean and we have to listen for that density and, and be able to hear the space in between even though it's fast. So you will have versions of that where we'll go. Uh, so you get the idea, right? So you'll see that in the music. All keys with that one as well, okay? All right. So now we are heading to mixed bag. So this one's a little strange, but here's the idea with mixed bag. There are some fundamental skills that we need to um, be able to do. Obviously we've done scales, but we've never done them in this pattern because this pattern is gonna set up kind of a chromatic um, idea that I want you to be able to do later. So this first pattern I'm calling alternating sticking scales. So we're alternating sticking. So that means we're alternating right, left, right, left, or left, right, left, right. Okay, I'm gonna do these left lead. Um, so you're doing your scale and doubling on the top and doing your scale and doubling on the bottom. And we can do that as many times. I call this mixed bag because we have a lot of options with this. So we'll just, we'll just decide as a group what we need to work on that week or in that, that class. But um, you could repeat that over and over, okay? Um, the, the idea, though, is that eventually you should be able to play all the scales in a row with that pattern, and on that double left at the end, you'll go to the next chromatic note, and then do that, that next scale, which would be B-flat. So eventually, we want, our goal is to get here. One, two, ready, go. Okay. Now, likewise,
guys, the next variation in mixed bag is arpeggios. So arpeggios is the first, third, and fifth of the scale degree, and then the octave above. So in the C scale, it would be C, E, G, C. Again, the double on the top, double at the bottom. So we could rep that over and over. Right? Um, but the, again, the idea eventually is going to be, can we do all of the arpeggios in a row? So something like this. with everything and I also marked the arpeggios. I also marked kind of like the constellation pattern of each arpeggio and there's some have the same pattern and some have the same pattern that are just flipped. So I, I drew that out so you can kind of visualize it, okay? All right, so we could mix scales uh, and arpeggios and put them back to back and then you could do that chromatically as well. So there's a lot of options here. So here's one option. variation I have on here is arpeggios but we're learning them I call it advanced arpeggios but uh, we're kind of getting some music theory terminology going so your root position triad triad meaning three which would be C E G the first third and fifth scale degree so it's three notes that's why it's called a triad um, it's also if you put them together it's a major chord okay a major triad um, if you start with the root on the bottom Position, okay now if you start with the third note the E on the bottom that is called first inversion okay and we need to start memorizing these terms um, so it's your same notes C E G C but it now it's E G C E you're just starting on the E and that's just calling it first inversion okay so here's root position and then here's first inversion starting on E Still doing G, C, and E. And then the next one's called second inversion, which will start on G, C, E, starting on G, still doing C, E, G after that. Okay, and then when we get to the top, we're in root position again. And then we have that double rack. So this is advanced arpeggios C, E, G, C. Okay, that's ascending advanced arpeggios. Then we would do the opposite, heading down. Okay, and so we want to be able to do that for all of them. So we could, the max we could do back to back on this would be two at a time. We could go. So we will do these in different orders and kind of assign different things for mixed bag. So hopefully that makes sense to you and you can get those fundamentals figured out. Okay. All right. The next one is called green clean. So green clean is a way for us to really, again, work on our 60 note density. Okay. When we have runs in the front ensemble, you need to be able to hear between the space. So you need to make sure that you can, don't just hear a bunch of noise, but you're hearing every single note. We have to de develop that that listening and we, we can really hear every every little note, every little space and hear things that the audience can't and that makes us sound perfect when we can hear little things that they can't. So this one is just really breaking down a, a 16th note rhythm. When we do this, do not stack. I don't want to stack on this. I want to go ta -ta -ta -ta, hit the same hit spot, center. Okay, don't stack. Okay. This could be done also right lead or left lead, just like most of these exercises. I'm gonna do right lead. So I go and making sure that's clean, and then we're gonna do so we go to that C to G, so that's the fifth. Again, like landmarks 
on gr it's getting us ready for green. Okay. Uh, then we do G. Then we're going to your D. Going to the ninth or the second, right? And then. So we're really trying to clean this idea of 16th notes. Then on the second line of green clean, we're going to try to clean two beats of 16th notes at a time as it's moving. Okay, so we have check first to get, again, get that clean sound in your head. Back and forth. And then we head on up. Okay, the C is actually the hardest one to do because there's no flats, so it makes it challenging. Then the opposite. And then we end with octaves. Okay, so here's Mr. I's attempt at playing green clean, even though I haven't cleaned it yet. this last exercise of the two mallet portion of 816. Okay, so this is Greenland is our final destination here with this green motion. So again, we do not want to stack. We want to make sure we're hitting in one hit spot the whole time. We want to make sure that our, we don't have extra tension in the front of the hand. Remember the weight is in the back of the hand. We're trying to let the stick, the weight of the stick go through the instrument. So make sure as we play more and more notes and we get more and more nervous about hitting wrong notes, We've got to stay loose and let the weight of the mallet go through. Don't pull your punches. We should be going for it, okay? Um, again, this one has an alternative rhythm. So the first rhythm goes, right? You could go, okay, so there's some options there, okay? Um, so this is your basic green pattern going from the first to the fifth, back and forth, and then eventually we go all the way to the ninth which is D in the key of C. Okay, then we could do the ninth to the fifth, all these landmarks that we have already kind of established uh, before we got to this exercise. You can do this right hand lead or left hand lead in all scales, okay? I'm just gonna do C, which is actually the most difficult one, so I'm probably gonna have some wrong notes here or there. Um, and there's a little bit of a pause in rhythm, like I said, on the first line. and then 16th note alternate rhythm. And then the second line just goes straight up green, which is up and down to the fifth twice and then up all the way and then twice and then back down and back up. So you'll, you'll see that. So we're gonna go through this. Ready, go. is that you're moving your body from left to right is very important. Most of the time, I was moving my body too slow. So make sure you're on the pivot notes, you really engage your knees and, and change your body weight uh, pretty quickly instead of late, okay? So make sure you can do that all keys. Um, go for the center for everything. Okay, also practice going edge. Sometimes we're going to do that, so be able to do both, um, okay? And you're sticking as well, okay? All right, on to the four mallet exercises in 8-8-16. The first four mallet exercise in 8-8-16 is kind of a grouping of three ideas, okay? The last idea is kind of a combination of interval shifts in your four mallets, just working on double verticals and doing interval shifts, okay? Uh, this is all stepwise motion interval shifts. So it's nothing too fast. Um, so the idea is that we have interval shifts, but sometimes you'll be moving out and sometimes you'll be moving in, sometimes they move together. So it's kind of a coordination thing as well. 
So the idea is, again, out of the three next exercises, the last one is the real one. The first two are basically focusing on the right-hand part and playing them in both, and then the second one is the left-hand part and playing them in both. So it's kind of setting you up for the last one, okay? So I'm going to jump to the last one real quick. So this one's called Double Vertical Interval Shifts. The basics is that we're using piston, trying to get good hit spots, making sure we're not playing in a rainbow. You gotta get your elbow down, get straight with your hit spots. Okay, we're doing a quick piston stroke. kind of just does the right hand in both hands so you can get really good at that okay okay so we're gonna focus on the right hand double vertical interval shifts so that again that's what the right hand is doing in the third exercise of interval shifts but I'm doing it in both hands just to get really solid with the motion okay so we start at a fifth in our right hand okay and then we go to uh, the, a fourth, so we're kind of going to the left with our fourth mallet to F, and then continue on to E, and then to D for a second, and then back out. Now that a fourth, fifth, and then we do a sixth, keep growing, and then we end back down to the fifth where we started, okay? Now all we're doing for this exercise is doing that in both hands, okay? So let's do that. One, two, ready, go. It's the same idea, piston stroke, um, but it's focusing on what the left hand part does in the third exercise. So uh, our left hand is going from a fifth to a sixth, so it goes up first, then back to a fifth, and then we kind of descend down all the way till we get to a second. one I sent out okay the last measure should be uh, the last two measures should be a CF 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 then go to a CG that's a mistake in the part okay so that's what the left hand does we're gonna, now we're gonna do it in both hands okay we go up first then down then up one two ready go So now it's just a matter of combining them, which I've already played. Um, so you're going to have to figure out when they're the same and when they're different and, and kind of coordinate that. Okay. So this, these three exercises you'll play only in the key of C mostly. If we want to get adventurous, then we can kind of move it to different keys um, later on. So the last exercise in 8.8.16 will coordinate with no value changes in drum line. We'll explain that later. So this is a longer phrase. This is a four line phrase, four measures in each line. Uh, we call this chromatic double vertical chords. The idea with this one is that we're gonna do this in four, uh, three variations, okay? You're gonna do your typical fifths. C, G, C, G, okay? The other way we're gonna do this is with arpeggios. So that's gonna create a major chord, C, E, G, C, your first, third, fifth, and octave 
Um, but we're going to call that closed position because it's all pretty closed. Okay. Okay, we'll do that all the way chromatically through that as well. And then the other position that we're going to do is called open. And that's going to be with the tonic first root in your first mallet, then a fifth. So we're kind of used to that already. What's different is the right hand on this open chord. We're going to go third and then octave there. So it's going to be first, fifth, third, and then the first again, but two octaves high. So it's a kind of an open arpeggio. Okay, so that's going to be different for everybody. Okay, so uh, this is kind of just next level of things we're, we're trying this year. Okay, so I'm actually going to do this uh, run through with the camera above so you can kind of see more what's going on. And I'll kind of describe things I'm going to do with my elbows as we start to do chords. Basically, guys, when we're doing chords, we do not want our elbows to be kicking out and our wrists to be doing anything crazy and abnormal. So we're going to move our bodies to make sure that we're in natural positions in our hands. I'd rather move our shoulders and body than our hands have to do weird things. So there are some ways we can um, use the secondary position, the edge of the edge, um, to help us with our technique. So I'm going to try to show you that from up above. Hopefully I can get a good, good uh, angle here. Okay, we are playing chromatic double vertical chords. Now in your instructions here it says to do C to G and then G to D. So in other words, uh, you're going to go quarter notes chromatically all the way till we get to G and that's where we're going to stop. And then you can keep going G all the way to all the way to D, okay, where the tonic is D. And both versions, both versions go up and then they go down. So make sure you're doing both. So speaking of body position, if you can see this or not, but let's say for example, when I go to B flat and F, what I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna go for the center here and then have to kick out my wrist. Look at my wrist, how uncomfortable that looks. Okay, I'm not gonna do that. So whenever I have a note that's on the top and one that's on the bottom or vice versa, one on the bottom, one on the top, I'm, whichever one is on top, I'm going to go for the edge of the edge, right on the corner, okay? And so then with the other mallet that's on the bottom, I'm going to try to aim for the top of the resonator, where it's still getting a good hit spot, but not that center, just above the, the, the resonator, okay? So this, that way, all I have to do, let's say, let's say this is a good position right here, A and, a and E natural. I look real relaxed and everything's good with my elbows and my wrists. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my shoulders and my body, so my feet also, if you can see my feet, um, maybe not, my feet are turning, turning at, at a slant. If you can't see my feet, they are about this angle, same angle as my shoulders, okay? And that way my arms, my wrists go from here and then my body turns and they don't have to, it doesn't have to get manipulated. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to move my wrist as little as possible. Turn my body. Look, my wrists look totally natural right now. Okay, not kicked out or anything weird. Okay, and likewise when I go to the B natural, I'm gonna to, to turn my body real quick. I gotta use my feet to help me with that. And I'm gonna go for again for the edge of the edge and above the resonator here. And again, my wrists are naturally in position instead of kicking them out, okay? So those are the things I want you to look for here and try, okay? Let's give this, this a shot. So this is fifths. So I pretty much can go for center for everything until I get to the B flat and B natural. Okay, so I'm gonna do C to G and then G going back to C. One, two, ready, go. I'm gonna lean forward and get the weight forward. Instead of moving my elbows, I'm moving my body. Still using piston stroke. Way forward. Now, here we go on the way down. G again. I'm trying to piston stroke everything. Back 
down. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you see my feet, but I have one foot forward and one foot back, and I'm kind of moving back and forth with my body and my body weight instead of moving my arms a lot. Okay. All right. Let's do G to D. One, two, ready, go. Weight forward. Weight back. Now I'm gonna just turn my body. Now I'm gonna move. So that was fits. Okay, so now we can do both of those, C to G or G to D, in closed position and also open position. So we just did the fits were the first position that we did, okay? So this kind of breaks down into arpeggios. So we, in the C, we have first, third, fifth, and first of the scale. Uh, so C, E, G, C. So that's what we're starting with. Now, as we start to learn our chords here, we need to memorize these chords. Okay, most of them are flat across, but some have this angle idea. And so this is another one of those, again, where I don't want to turn my wrist. So I'm going to turn my shoulders, okay? So for these, I actually want you to, when you have, for example, D flat and F, you're gonna go for the edge of the edge on D flat, and you're gonna hit on the top of the resonator for F. For your right hand, you have, um, I want you to go for a good hit spot. So because your shoulders are at an angle, I don't want you to go flat across, I want you to go your uh, third mallet above the resonator and your fourth mallet below the resonator. Those are still good viable hit spots, and your wrist won't be kicked out weird because you're trying to go flat. So we're at a kind of a slant. Even though they're both on top, they're kind of at a slant. Okay? So that's what we're kind of going for there. Now, likewise, if we're doing like the D uh, arpeggio, we're going to go F sharp is going to be on the edge of the edge on the secondary. Your one mallet on the D will be above the resonator. Now, again, so my right hand doesn't have to be flat and all weird with my wrist like that. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to go for the bottom of the resonator on the A and the top of the resonator for, for D. Even though they're both on the bottom, that's still another viable hit spot. So now our, our angles are more natural in our wrists instead of having to do something weird. Okay? So those are the things I want you to look for on this. Okay? Um, you will have to memorize these arpeggios for this to work, but a lot of these shapes are the same. There's a lot of body motion. And so you're going to have to be moving back and forth. you got to be ready for that, okay? All right, let's see how this goes. One, two, ready, go. One, two, ready, go. one what you're going to want to do is get closer for B flat D F and B flat okay for B you're actually going to have to step away so your hands can get real close to themselves okay all right let's give it a shot one two ready go
so for the next position is our open position. So we have fifths to start out with C, G, C, G, one, five, one, five. Then we had our closed position, one, three, five, one. Now we're gonna go one, five, so fifth on the bottom, we already know that. And then we're gonna go third and first octave at the top. Okay, so trying to do the same ideas here, but now that's a little bit more of an open uh, chord structure here, okay? Okay, so for these open chords, there's a little bit more openness in the chest and the arms, and so the, the turning your shoulders won't happen as, as much as your elbows are gonna have to kind of bow out, and that's kind of your body changing position. So this is more from the elbows, okay? So for example, I'm going on the C scale, I got C, G, E, C. That's flat across, obviously. When I go to the D flat, I've got D flat, A flat, and I'm gonna have F, D flat. Of course, I'm gonna go for the secondary position. I'm gonna kick out my elbow, but I don't really have to turn my body for these upper ones, so for the left hand. So I'm just gonna kinda of kick my elbow out, and that's gonna take care of stuff, okay? So then for here, all I'm gonna do is bring my elbow in for the D and the A, uh, for the F sharp and the D, rather. I'm just gonna bring that, that elbow in. I don't really have to kick my wrist that much. Okay, so it's a, it's a little bit more in the arms in the open position. Okay, let's give it a shot. Two, ready, go. So, all right, uh, we can do the same thing from G to D. One, two, ready, go. double vertical chord structure. We need, we're learning all these different chords that you might encounter in the show. So, all right, that wraps it up for 8816. Thank you very much.